Boom, we are live for a brand new training. This one's going to be a very juicy one. I'm going to be showing you exactly how to go from zero to $10,000 per month with your social media marketing agency in 24 days. It's going to be a very juicy one. I'm going to give you proof. No, I'm not only I'm going to give you proof, but I'm actually going to give you a clear roadmap that you can implement. So by the, by the end of the, the video, you can actually walk away with tangible strategies, tangible advice that you can implement right away into your agency, into what you're currently doing to get massive, massive results. Let's get right into it. How to go from zero to $10,000 per month with SMA in 24 days. As you guys can see, I've got a very clear document that I'm going to be walking you through because as you guys know, I'm a, you know, I'm a professional. Proof, because proof tastes good, right? We all love proof, right? So can this even be achieved? And the simple answer is yes. I've had plenty of students who have achieved this. In fact, I've, I've left an example here of Liam, one of my students, and have literally left, you know, receipts, timestamps. So you guys can see that, you know, using the, the methods and, and the strategies that I'm going to be sharing with you today, you can also achieve this. You know, I'm one of the mindsets that you're going to have in, in life and in business is that if someone else has done it, you can do it too, right? These people, a lot of these people that are getting incredible results have literally half your talent, half your skill set, half your expertise, and they're still getting better results than you, right? And so, you know, I'm, I'm under the school of thought that uh, if someone else has done it, then you you uh, you can too, and you can even uh, do it better, right? Because you can learn from their mistakes. So, yeah, buckle up. First of all, we've got the proof, all right? So here we can see Liam. Uh, hopefully, you guys can see it's not too too small. Uh, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. So here we've got Liam. A uh, little bit of motivation. Uh, he says, "This week I closed a client for five k, another uh, one for three point five k, another one for two point five k, and another one for one k." Okay, so that's what twelve k in one single week. Right. So in one single week, he signs a client, uh, he signs uh, three, four clients, pardon me, for 12K. Right. Then he signs a client for 4K per month. And this is just fixed, by the way. Uh, you know, the, the, the vast majority of my students are signing fixed plus percentage of ad profits. He just hasn't included it here. And then he signs another, he signs another 5K client. Right. Now, the cool thing about this is that this is from April 26th and May 2nd. All right. So, I mean, you do the math, but that's less than 24 days. All right. Uh, and so if someone else has done it, you can too. And that is my school thought. This is one of my students. If you guys are tuning in right now, um, this is Liam. And uh, yeah, you know, he didn't just go from uh, zero to 10K. He went uh, from zero to 21K in less than 24 days. Now, I, what I've gone ahead and done is I've broken it down into different phases that I'm going to be walking you through. All right. In 24 days, we've got the first three days. We're going to go uh, and get up and running very, very quickly because there's no time to waste. 72 hours is all we need, right? And then we've got three weeks. So three weeks plus three days. First three days, right? Here's the three things that we're going to do. Day one, the foundations, right? We're going to set up the, the vital foundations. There's a bunch of other things that obviously it'd be good to set up, right? And um, obviously in the mentorship, I go into extensive detail, et cetera, but for this live training, I am focusing on absolutely the vital stuff that you need to set up to sign to get to 10k per month in 24 days to get to 20k uh, per month, 20k, 10k per month in the fastest way possible, right? So day one, we've got the foundations. We're gonna go ahead set up domain, email, and G Suite, right? Then we're gonna set up a, a Zoom account so you can actually jump on um, with people and close the deal, right? Logo can be a good addition, not vital at all, right? So I'm not even including it. And then we're going to set up your scheduling software. So it, it can either be Acuity or Canly, uh, whatever you want, right? So yeah, ma make sure that, that you understand that those are the three things um, that we're going to set up as soon as possible, right? And this is really all you need. You need a domain, email, G Suite, Zoom account, and then Canly or Acuity, okay? So that people can actually book in a time slot with you. And then basically the way that these scheduling softwares work is you plug in your Zoom account, and once they book in a time with you, they will get a Zoom link sent to them, right? And they'll just jump on the Zoom link at the scheduled time. You hop on and then you close them, right? So that's the first thing that we're going to do for uh, day, uh, day one, uh, day two. We're going to do the three key pillars, right? So first thing, we've got the niche. So we're going to pick a sub niche within e-commerce. This is absolutely vital. I talk about this extensively. Um, and if you've you know, watch any of my YouTube trainings, you know why it's incredibly vital to have a niche. The simple reason being that we want a monopoly agency, okay? what I call a monopoly agency. And essentially, the reason why we want to do this is because when most people start an agency, the way, the, the way they go about it is completely wrong, right? They try to tap into a broad market because they think that that way they'll have a lot more opportunities to close people. 
And that's just not, not the case, right? When you tap into a broad market like the e-commerce space, it's actually much, much harder to get results. Why? Because there are established agencies that have been around for a very long time and have worked with big, you know, big clients, and they're going to just essentially beat you out. Right. It's the same with that when you're starting, if you're starting your agency and you're trying to compete against against me, you know, I've been in the space for a while now. I've got much more social proof than you. I've got much more expertise and I've got a bunch of other things. But I there's a few things that I don't have. Right. I don't have your agility. For example, I cannot now focus on a very niche um, audience and a very niche group of, of uh, e-com brands. Why? Because I'm a clunky elephant. Right. You know, I've worked with, um, you know, brands from uh, under. A, a big, big umbrella, right? Why? Because I'm at that scale. However, when I started, I tapped into a specific niche within e-commerce because I, I, I needed to build my, you know, I, my, I needed to sign clients fast, right? And so when you tap into a niche within e-commerce, you're able to sign clients much, much faster because there's this thing called the in-group, out-group bias. We tend to favor people who share, uh, share similar traits as us, right? And so not only is it much easier for you to build expertise around a specific niche that is small in a short period of time, but you also get the, um, you know, you also get uh, essentially a lot of brand and, and econ founders favoring you because you specialize in a specific space. These bigger agencies cannot do that. Do you see what I'm, you know, what I'm, uh, what I'm saying here, right? Building a monopoly agency is literally the unfair advantage that we have when we're starting out. And I've talked extensively about this in other live trainings. You guys can watch that. But you need, you need to, you need to make sure that you pick a niche within e-commerce. So that is that for the niche. We also have the service, okay? So you want to make sure that you pick a revenue-driven service. It has to be revenue-driven. There has to be a dollar sign attached to it. Why? Because then we can justify our value. We can go to the client and say, hey, I've spent this much for you and I've made you this much and here's my value and here's why you should keep me around. And if you don't want to keep me around, then that's completely fine, right? But it's not, you know, the, the, the value is not subjective, all right? The value is not dependent on whether the client wakes up on the wrong uh, on the right side of the bed or the wrong side of the bed. The, the value is dependent on the numbers. We want to make sure that it's revenue driven. You can go down two routes. You can go down the paid ads route. You can pick Facebook ads, YouTube ads, TikTok ads, Snapchat ads. So many people, you know, make a big deal about this. Like, what platform should I pick? And just pick a platform. It's, it, 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 it's just one part of the equation, right? Which I'll talk about in just a second. It's just one part of the equation. It's just the traffic portion. There's so many. There's a billion different ways of generating traffic. Billion different ways. Just pick one. Doesn't matter, right? You know, obviously the the Facebook ecosystem is matured, right? The Facebook is, is, ecosystem is proven, and a lot of these brands have seen other brands absolutely crush it on the back of Facebook ads, right? So Facebook ads may be a little bit more proven, but you know, all, there are other services that have those edges where maybe a brand that has already crushed it with Facebook ads, they want to add uh, another source of traffic, then it's much easier for them. Uh, to, to see the value in something like TikTok or Snapchat or Pinterest ads or something more alternative. My, my point is just pick one. It's just, it's just the traffic source. It's just one part of the process to results, which I'll talk about in just a second, right? Because the third thing that you need is what no one is talking about in this space. It's an irresistible offer. You need to be outcome. If, you, if you're trying to get results with your agency, it's as simple as this. You need to be outcome driven, not service driven. You need to be outcome driven, not service driven. Let me repeat that once, once more. You need to be outcome-driven, not service-driven. You're not selling a service. And if you are selling a service, you're going to be beaten out by all these people that can charge less, less, uh, less for that service, right? You become price competitive. We're not going to be price competitive. We don't want that end of the market, right? That is the worst end of the market. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use an example. Uh, at, a, at these two, um, two students, and essentially, uh, they came to me. They were doing um, essentially they were doing clips of podcasts. So they were taking long form podcasts and doing clips for TikTok and Reels, right? And that was their service. And it's not a bad service. You know, we all know that's in demand. You know, you've seen them. You've seen them around, right? Uh, you've seen these these clips. But the, the problem with that is that that's just a service. You know, before coming into the the, the program, they were just selling a service. And so, it, what that means is you have to charge low ticket. You're not charging more than 500 for that service, right? And what that also means is that you're not going to have very long retention, right? And what that also means is that it's going to make the sales process way, way harder. So what I said is, cool, that's just a portion of your process to results. It's just one way of you're generating them traffic by doing one thing, right? So you're, you're coming in and you're saying, okay, we're going to generate you more traffic. We're going to generate you more eyeballs for your business, for your podcast, using clips of your long form content. But then what's the next step, right? What is the outcome that they're going to get? You need to have a very clear process and a, a very a clear outcome. For example, you could uh, you could say, 
uh, we hope podcast hosts double their subscriptions on Apple Podcasts using our proven content distribution framework. Right, your content distribution framework is just you know the the, the clips, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what is the you know? Do you have a funnel in place? Like, can you go to the the your your client podcast host and tell them the sort of call to actions that they need to have in place, right, for those clips? Can you uh, recommend them different uh, topics and, and different things that they can do on their social media? Can you recommend recommend them a an uh, Instagram story uh, strategy to convert and nurture all these people that uh, you're you're driving to their profiles? Can you do that, right? And can you be the num the 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 only agency that focuses on this for podcast hosts? If you do that, podcast hosts are going to be jumping on you, right? They're going to be throwing themselves at you because you have a, a very specific approach to results for a very specific audience with a very clear outcome, right? That is what an irresistible offer really is, right? It's not, oh, we do clips. Okay, cool. So 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 do people in, in very low GDP countries for like a tenth of your price. How are you going to compete, right? But when you have a very clear approach to results, then that makes a lot more sense, right? Every single person that I, you know, I, I hire a bunch of um, agencies for my businesses. Every single agency that I hire has a very clear process to results, right? So, for example, I hired these guys to do my, uh, you know, to do some paid shoutouts on IG, right? They're not just doing paid shoutouts because I, I could do that. I could get my team to do that. Just contact a bunch of IG pages, done, right? But it's the funnel in place, right? Do they, you know, do they know how to convert this traffic that they're driving to my my profiles into? Uh, book meetings into whatever it is, right? Into cash, essentially, right? You could also go to, to this podcast host and, and you could say, look, we help podcast hosts double their revenue by uh, creating a, by essentially creating a well old uh, sales infrastructure using our content uh, uh, distribution framework, right? Where essentially, and you could break it down a, a little bit further, but essentially we hope you generate more content without you doing any, any uh, more work, right? So we hope you generate more content, generate more traffic without you doing any extra work Right? And we hope you nurture these leads through the use of appointment setters, driving them to your newsletter where you can sell them shit. You know, for example, uh, Tim Ferriss is a great example of this, right? He had a, an incredibly, uh, incredibly popular uh, newsletter that he drove traffic from the podcast to the newsletter, right? Five minute, uh, I think it's Bullet, Bullet Friday, five minute Bullet Friday. I'm, I'm sure you guys have, have heard of this. That is day two. I, I kind of went on a little tangent, but hopefully that explains what an irresistible offer kind of looks like, right? I get a lot of questions on, you know, what is an irresistible offer? Because everyone talks about it. Everyone and their mother like talks about how important it is, but they never actually dive deep, right? It's not, and 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 this is something that you need to hear. Your service is not your offer, right? So do not come to me telling me, you know, how you finally chosen Facebook ads. Congrats. That is your, it's it's one part of the, the the equation, right? Any guru, any coach out there telling you, you know, that you've done an amazing job by just picking a service. Dude, that's not going to get you anywhere, right? And by the way, I'm not, as, as you can probably see, like the example that I use here and, and the, and the, um, the, the recommendations that I gave these guys, like, I mean, it's not rocket science. I've been in the space for a while now. I, I know what I'm doing, but it's just going that extra mile, right? It's thinking, okay, that's a traffic source, right? I'm, I'm, I'm doing clips, right? That's how I generate a little bit more traffic. But how do I convert this traffic? Is what I've been saying for the past two years, right? E-commerce growth is not just paid ads. If you look at uh, e-commerce growth from a Facebook ads lens, you're going to be beaten out by the agencies that actually have more of a 360 approach that have given a little bit of more, more thought into what it takes to convert a, a customer. Simple as that, right? So that, that's what I mean by an offer. An offer is outcome driven. It is not service driven. I don't give a shit about the service that you pick. You can pick anything. Anything works, right? There's so many. There's a billion different ways of generating traffic. You could do an affiliate uh, affiliate marketing agency. You could do a, a, a TikTok real clips agency. You could do a Facebook ads agency. You could do a, pin, uh, a Pinterest ads agency, TikTok ads agency, Snapchat ads agency. You could do paid paid uh, IG shoutouts agency. You could do. I mean, you could do YouTube ads agency. You could do. Uh, influencer marketing agency. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, right? The, this, this a billion different opportunities out there. You, you guys really need to st uh, start thinking about um, start thinking small. Uh, stop thinking small. Pardon. So day three. Okay, what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up your social media. All right. Uh, we are broke, <laughs> so we're gonna use the free outreach methods that are highly effective. Right. Again, trap. There's a billion different ways of acquiring traffic. There's another thing that people get caught up on. You know, what's the best way of you know what's the best platform to reach out to clients? They all work. It's just it's just a way of generating eyeballs. It's what you do with those eyeballs, right? The far more valuable thing is the sales process behind it. Does that make sense? I could generate eyeballs. 
I mean, I mean, I could go on the street. I could cold call businesses, right? I could, I could do all these billion different outreach methods. It doesn't mean they're the most effective one, right? So we're, we're looking for asymmetric return activities, right? And what I found is with social media, it's one to many, right? With a call, with a cold call, it's one to one. And because it's, and, and you know, not only is it one to one, but it's, it's, there's a lot of friction, right? Because you're calling people out of the blue um, and they're going about their day and they don't, the last thing they want to do is fucking take your call, right? But social media is one to many. And when you're on social media and you, and you understand the context of social media and why people are on social media and you tailor your messaging to that, then, then you've got something in your hands, right? We're going to optimize our Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn for the sake of this training. We're going to focus on LinkedIn, right? Why? Because focus is key, right? If you if you've only got twenty four days, then you know focus is key. So we're gonna do that, right? Now, one key thing that I want to highlight, right, as we are kind of setting up your social media, I'll, I'll talk about authority building, I'll talk about content, I'll talk about a bunch of billion different things, right? But I want to make sure that on the bio, which we'll talk about in just a second, but on the bio, the mission. Uh, needs to be related to your niche more than your service. So there's another little hack that I found to be quite effective. You want to make sure on social media, you want to make sure that you fit within the tribes. You want to make sure that you fit right in, right? You don't, you want to make sure that they don't connect with, you know, when they see you, right? When they see your connection or you trying to connect with them, you want to make sure that they don't immediately think this person's going to sell me something, right? And so I see a lot of people put in their bio, in their mission, on LinkedIn or and, 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 and all these platforms, helping, you know, let's just say helping e-com businesses, helping e-com businesses scale with paid ads. And you're connected, you're trying to connect with an e-com founder. As soon as he sees that, I mean, any, anyone with a brain is going to, is going to go, yeah, this person is going to, is, is trying to infiltrate my network so he can sell me some shit. Right. And you haven't even had a chance to connect with them. Right. The, the, what we're trying to do here with the connection is just trying to get them into our network. Because once we have them as a connection, they can see our content and we can engage with them via DMs, right? And we can nurture them over time. So we're just trying to get that connection, right? And so what I what what I what I um, what I like to use and what my students use is what I, what we call what we call the Trojan horse strategy. I'm not sure if you guys know the the story of the Trojan horse. Uh, if you don't, then I'll you you can just Google it because uh, I want to make sure that I keep this concise and value based. But essentially, we don't want to look like someone who's going to sell them something. Right, and then once we infiltrate their network, we can start kind of nurturing them and you know uh, trying to add value to them. Right, so something much better because this guy said uh, example. So something much better. I'm, I'm going to use the the example of the podcast. Right, uh, that that I that I uh, that I mentioned previously. Something much better would be something like um, building out, uh, for, for example, distributing the most cutting edge podcast in the world. Founder at podcast uh, blow up, something like that, right? When when I read that and I'm a podcast host, I don't go, oh, this person's trying to uh, sell me something, right? I mean, distributing is probably not the best word. You could say like building the next generation of podcasts or um, you know the something like that. Like essentially something that doesn't scream, I'm going to sell you something, right? But this really kind of works. I mean, it works pretty well. That, that's just off, off, the, off the top of my head. But it doesn't scream, I'm going to sell you something. It screams more like, oh, this person is in my, my space, right? They're in, my, in the podcast space. So that's much more likely to connect with me. Okay? So that's, that's a little uh, tiny thing that, that I want you to keep in mind before we get into week one, two, and three. But yeah, that, those are the first three days. Next three weeks are important. And by the way, when I say like week one, we're going to do this, week two, we're going to do this, week three, it means that week one, we start doing this, but it's kind of like a continual process, right? So you do things in, in parallel, so keep that in mind. But week one, we're going to start uh, start the authority building, right? Again, I'm going to I'm gonna continue with the LinkedIn uh, example. But the first thing that we're going to do for LinkedIn is we're going to use people within our space to build up uh, our network and engagement. So for every single social media platform, you want to identify the key metrics for social proof and authority. On Instagram, for example, typically followers is, is one of those metrics, number of likes on our picture, et cetera, et cetera. Those are really vanity, so they're not huge. And I'll talk about that in just a second. But for LinkedIn, uh, it's it's a little bit easier because you know you can you essentially the, the main uh, KPIs that you know essentially say you know tell essentially identify someone that has social proof or or authority is mainly connections and endorsements, 
right? So you want to make sure that you get 500 plus connections and you want to make sure that you get between 20 to 50 endorsements per skill. I truly believe you can get to 99 plus endorsements, um, 99 plus like endorsements on, on each uh, skill, at least the top three. And the simple the simple way that you do that is you connect with people within your space and you go, hey, look, you know, we both know how, how important it is to have a very strong optimized uh, LinkedIn profile. So I'd love to connect with you. And um, yeah, if, if you're down to endorse each other, we'd also love to, to do that. Right? And you just use a little bit of value arbitrage. You do this for a few days. And then you use the people within your space, the agents, you know, service providers, agency uh, owners, consultants, people that are never going to buy from you. But you use these people, for lack of a better word, to build out your own um, social proof and authority within the, within the space. And by doing so, you also help them out. Right, So it's a little bit, a little bit of a, a value arbitrage. And you know, business works like that. So you use those people that are never going to buy from you to build out the authority and have a good network. And then once you've done that, you can actually start connecting with people within your niche. So let's just say, for example, within the uh, e-com space, you pick a pair on fashion, right? So you can go ahead, filter out by a pair on fashion, uh, and you'll find a lot of founders and, and uh, owners. I could do a whole video on this. And, you know, obviously in, in the mentorship, I go extensively uh, into how to, you know, actually do the LinkedIn prospecting and outreach, et cetera, et cetera. But you start connecting with people in your niche, right? It's important to have a strong bio that doesn't scream, I'm going to sell you something. We're gonna, we've already talked about that, okay? Once you put that bio in place that doesn't scream, I'm gonna sell you something, then you wanna make sure that you connect with people. I recommend a connection note. You wanna kind of split test um, between adding a connection note and not add, adding a connection note. But typically what I like to do for a connection note is just basically build as much familiarity as possible. People buy from People buy from people they respect, not people that they like, but people connect with people on social media that, that they have familiarity, right? Like, if you try to follow someone um, on IG and they don't know you, like they're probably not going to accept you, right? But if you have something in common, then they might, okay? So what we're trying to do here is build as much familiarity as possible. So something like th that, you know, you could use uh, is, is something along the lines of like, hey, jo you know, John, hey, John, I uh, love what you're doing at apparel, mrapparel.com. Love the fact that you guys are not only, um, you know, not, not only do you have incredible designs, but you're, just, uh, you're also using sustainable fabrics. Um, you know, always ways to connect with other like-minded and positive people in the space, right? So you're saying a bunch of things there. You're given a little tiny snippet and, and you're telling them like, hey, I've, I've done a little bit of homework. It took you maybe two seconds to check out their website and check out their LinkedIn page and, you know, know what they, know what they stand for, uh, know what they stand for by just checking out their, uh, their bio, their mission. And you're also telling John that you are, like him, you're like-minded, and that you're also positive, right? And who doesn't like positive people? Okay. Now, do not copy and paste that because that's not going to be as effective. But I'm saying use the same sort of uh, psychology behind your note, behind connecting with people. We're just trying to get the connection at this point. Do not talk about service. Do not talk about any of that shit. Just try to get the connection. All right. And the way you get the connection is by building fam uh, familiarity. So that is a little bit of authority building. We've talked about how to uh, utilize people within your space to build out your network. And then also how to start connecting with people within your niche. Okay, very important that they're within your niche. Okay, do not start adding people from a billion different niches within the e-com space. Why? Because it's going to be much, much harder to sign clients. Okay, because then, you know, the, the whole thing about you being in a specific space and the in-group, out-group bias is not going to kick in. All right. Also, when you sign your first client, if you narrow down into the apparel and fashion, you're going to sign an, an apparel and fashion client. The second apparel and fashion client is going to be 10 times easier to sign. Right? That's not the case if you're jumping from niche to niche. Right? So I, mean, I could talk about that for hours and then, but you get the point. Week one, week two, we're going to do content nurturing. And I know what some of you are thinking. Oh, you know, I hate content. Look, we're not trying to be a Gary Vee. In fact, you don't need to be even on video. A lot of this content is most of the content. In fact, 100% of the content can be written form. It will take you 10, 15 minutes to whip it out. Okay? 10, 15 minutes to whip it out. And if you don't think that's a good investment of, of time, and uh, I mean, you won't understand how powerful this is until you actually do it. Okay, This is one of the secret sources that people that are really crushing it in the online space understand. They understand the power of asymmetric return activities. Okay, And they understand that a piece of content over time can be watched and can be viewed by millions, well, not millions, but hundreds or thousands of qualified prospects. Okay. So that's the first thing that you need to understand. And, and, and so it's one to many. And we're trying to capitalize and tap into outreach methods that are one to many. I haven't done a cold call. Well, that's 
when I started, I did local business. So I did like maybe three, four cold calls. I just realized that, look, I'm not, I'm not going to do this um, because it involves your time. You have to be sitting down, you know, for six to eight hours a day, banging out uh, hundreds of cold calls. It, it, it's not, you're never going to be able to, to scale that unless you get like a bunch of people like doing cold calls and who's going to do cold calls for you. If, if you don't have a, a, a proven a qualified pipeline ready, that's not going to work. Right. And so understand that also understand that we're not trying to go, we're, we're not trying to get uh, a, a billion different like you know billion billions of likes we're not trying to get hundreds and thousands of followers no none of that okay look i speak with a lot of influencers who have millions of followers in fact a lot of them have been my clients okay they have millions of followers and they struggle to monetize why number one either because they don't have something good to sell number two because their audience is not qualified or does not have money Okay, so it's not about the number of uh, the number of followers doesn't have uh, uh, literally has no correlation with the amount of money you make. Okay, well, it does if you have a proven sales process, right? But if you don't have a proven sales process, it has absolutely no correlation. Uh, as I mentioned, like I know a lot of people right in the space that have millions of followers and they struggle to monetize. Why? Because they don't have a proven sales process. You know, they don't have a qualified in, in the, all those followers. They're not qualified. So I would much rather have five people that are CEOs of big companies within the apparel fashion space see my content on a daily basis, okay, that can pay anywhere between five to 10K for an agency than have hundreds of thousands of followers who are willing to spend nothing on me, right? Because they would never buy anything from me because they're just there to get entertained, right? So understand that it's, it's incredibly important. Uh, it's a mindset shift that you need to make. We're not trying to explode our ego. We're trying to explode our bank account. We're trying to have an impact in the world. We're not trying to have a bunch of people, uh, you know, follow us to be entertained and us be a clown, right? And but I mean, if you're not trying to do that, then this video is not for you, right? But uh, for me, I think it's it's much more fulfilling to have a big impact uh, on a smaller group of people that then the, you know, and then those group of people have a uh, impact on their communities because I've impacted them, so have a ripple effect and have millions and millions of followers. Uh, who are just looking at me, you know, trying to be entertained and, and me have to be a clown for them, right? Cool. So having said that, there are four types of content you're going to post on a daily basis. You need to be consistent with it. It's going to take you 10, 15 minutes, right? These four types of contents, you're never going to run out of ideas. Never going to run out of ideas. It's simple as that. If you follow this these guidelines, you're never going to run out of ideas, okay? Hope, hope you know. Hopefully you guys are ready. So four types of content. This is going to help us portray our authority and, and portray our, our expertise. You're going to take previous knowledge from big creators. So articles, podcasts, uh, videos from big creators within a broad space like digital marketing or e-commerce growth. And you're going to go ahead and take that, take those proven topics and you're just going to go ahead and apply it to your niche. It's not copy and paste the whole thing, right? It's just take the idea, take the idea, Use a similar structure and then just give it your own spin applied to your space. So, for example, you go and you see that Neil Patel has uh, created an article or, or has created a video on the three proven retargeting strategies for e-commerce brands in 2022. Because we are not in the, you know, we're not just tapping into a broad e-com space. We're tapping into, let's just say, apparel and fashion. You go three proven retargeting strategies for apparel and fashion brands in 2022. And it's as simple as that, right? And you can do this over and over and over again, putting your own spin to it, okay? There's absolutely no, um, there's no fulfillment in copying other people's work, but you want to steal like an artist until you can formulate your own thoughts, right? So do that, important. Number two, commentary with your niche. Understand that they care more about their space than your service. The first type of content is important because it essentially helps us set ourselves apart and say like, hey, I'm, a, I'm an authority in what I do, right? I know about my, my service. The second type of content is great because it tells them, I genuinely care about your space and I know about your space more than any other service provider. I'm not just a fly-by-night opportunist trying to make some money from apparel and fashion brands. I, I genuinely care. And it's as simple as you pick out five to 10 magazines Okay, if you pick up five to ten uh, magazines on whatever niche, apparel and fashion, right? GQ, Hype Beast, Hype Babe, um, I don't know, the, 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 you know, Cosmopolitan. Uh, the list goes on, right? And you just go ahead and you, uh, you know, every single morning when you're trying to do some content, you just look for articles on things that are happening, right? This person sold their fashion brand 
and this brand is doing a, a collab with this brand and these are the next you know five trends to watch out for in September and you just comment on this right for example take the the example of the the five trends to watch out for September take that article from GQ right and just comment on it on your LinkedIn page from maybe a little bit of a and an, add a little bit of a, a, an e-commerce growth angle to it and their marketing angle to it what that means for the marketing space or how this brand is utilizing marketing effectively by doing so something like that right I mean it, it could literally just be like oh Adidas has collabed with um board apes yacht club right like this is what this this is what this means for the online space and this is what what it means this is what this means for the merge between online and uh you know physical fashion brands something like that right i'm just making it up as i go but you get the point so that's the, the second type of content again you can literally create billions and billions and billions of of posts uh, off of that um third type of content personal applied to professional okay people more so than ever the line between personal and professional is blurred okay people post about their professional accomplishments on their personal pages on ig and yeah people want to see the, the the person behind the business more than ever that is why you know all these massive brands you, you take gymshark ben francis right like he has a youtube channel explaining his whole process you take kylie cosmetics you know has a massive personal brand people want to see the, the person behind the business more than ever right so it could literally be as simple as take the, your phone take a selfie right and you say i love the fact that uh you know uh, monday morning uh, ready to crush it for the week. Love the fact that I get to wake up and uh, not only and 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 work on businesses that have you know that that have uh, you know that have inspired me for the past five years, and I get to work with um, you know with a space that 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 I've been passionate uh, that that I've been passionate about since I was five, something like that, right? But you tie the 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 personal and the, and 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 you apply to the the professional. And, and the final thing is hand raising content, right? I mean, if you guys want to see an example of this, because I use this all across my businesses, not only in my personal brand, my agency, just go through my Facebook community. You know, don't look at what I say, look at what I do. And just look at the type of content that I post, right? So free trainings, just like this, resource, tool, growth, uh, you know, a growth goal, whatever it is, right? Um, that, that's just essentially getting people to raise their hand. And uh, you get people to comment and, and engage with you, okay? As I said, you don't need likes. The right people are seeing your content, which is far more powerful. So as you can see, three out of uh, three out of those four is just building up, nurturing people, right? People are going to like it. And so that's a form of engagement. And then uh, one out of four is hand raising content. So really calling out the people that are that are genuinely interested. There's always going to be a, there's always going to be a, at least a 3% of people that are ready to buy in your audience. Okay. So you need to constantly do this hand raising content um, so that you can kind of, you know, call out these people. And when you do hand raising content that is value based, you're going to get a lot more than 3%, right? 3% is when you actually pitch a product or a service, and 3% is going to show interest, right? When you do something that's value, typically you can see 20, you know, even like 25% uh, if, you, if you have an engaged uh, audience. So, as I said, you don't need likes, right? People are seeing your content, which is far more powerful, right? So, that's week two. Now, if you guys are enjoying this, give it a big, 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 big thumbs up. Um, and as you guys can see in the description, I am giving away three growth calls, three roadmap calls where me and the team are going to help you put together your next five moves to grow and absolutely just fucking <laughs> blow up your agency uh, before 2023. So if you are interested in that, I'm giving them uh, away. All you have to do is just come in roadmap. Who's ready for a week three appointment setting? Ooh, this is going to be nice. Um, if you follow me on my main Facebook feed or even on the Facebook, I think I posted as well. Um, my appointment setters are literally booking in like 20, 30 plus meetings every single day. It's, it, it's nuts. It's, it's honestly nuts. Like, you know, we're, we're booked out for the whole month. It's, it's actually nuts. Um, and so I'm going to share with you, a, uh, so, you know, a snippet of, of the framework that, that I teach them and, and that I teach inside my, my mentorship. Um, I've, I, I generally think I've got some of the best performing appointment setters in, in the world. Uh, and that comes down to obviously me having put together a really cool traffic machine but also having a very highly well, just a very well old uh, appointment setting process. Cool. So first things first is identifying the traffic sources. Right now, we should have people in our pipeline that are either in three different stages, 
Okay. I mean, I could really go grander and like, you know, really break it apart and have like 10 different stages, but really three main stages that you need to be aware of. Number one, people who you've added, but haven't engaged yet, right? These are people that you constantly add in every single day. These people enter the pipeline every single day. Okay. Number two, people who've engaged with your connection note, but not with your content. So maybe they've said, oh, you know, uh, you know, John says, for example, Jaime, great connecting with you. Also look forward to, uh, to, uh, seeing your content, right? Or, Awesome, you know, I pre appreciate your your comment on my on, on Mr. Apparel. Something like that, right? But they haven't engaged with the content. And also you've got people who've engaged with your content and maybe haven't actually engaged with your connection node. You've also got people who've engaged with the content connection node and have also engaged with the content, right? So these are the four type of people. Depending on what they've done, you want to hit them with that with with whatever stage of the funnel they're at, right? So if they haven't engaged with the content, then you can speak to that, right? Hey, um, I just saw you, you enter my network. I absolutely love what you're doing here, here, here. Um, you know, like, and then you're going to follow exactly what I'm going to tell you right now. Right. But the, my, my main point here is you're going to start the first line or so it's going to be tailored to where they're currently at in your pipeline, where they're currently at in the process, what type of, of, uh, engagement, uh, they've, they've shown, right. So, Hey, Chris, uh, saw you, uh, you engaged with my last, my, uh, my last post on, uh, Adidas collabing with um, board board yacht club. Uh, you know, what, what do you think, right? Or or what, what are some of the, the the thoughts of what are some of your thoughts in 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 that that regard? Would love to to hear from Ron authority in in, in the space, right? So you kind of like scratch uh, scratching scratching uh, scratching their ego a little bit, right? So that's just you know the first thing that you need to understand. You need to speak to where they're currently at in the state uh, in in the funnel. And then you're going to do these, these three things. It's as simple as this, these three things. Number one, you're going to find out where they're currently at with their business, right? Number two, you're going to find out where they're trying to get to. Number three, you're going to propose an obligation roadmap uh, growth goal, right? Uh, I'm going to give you examples of this. So for example, let me, let, let, let's use the example of Mr. Apparel, right? That I've used. So I think it's John, right? His name. Let's, let's just say that I, I checked them out and I see that they're going hard on TikTok. Right. And then the really question on TikTok, a lot of fashion brands are, are, are crushing it on TikTok. And so I say, Chris, I saw you crushing it on TikTok. Absolutely love your strategy. Love the fact that you guys are using, not only using UGC content, but uh, the fact that you, you're tapping into, you know, um, the, the latest trends. You, you guys really seem to have a, a great pulse on uh, the TikTok landscape. I'm, I'm assuming that's, 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 uh, that's blown up the brand in the past few months, right? I'm, I'm seeing you guys everywhere. Congrats. Okay. Something like that. Do you, do you see how it, there's a, a genuine human connection uh, and human interaction, but I'm trying to see where they're currently at, right? So Chris is going to, uh, John is going to say, hi, may appreciate it. Yes. It's, it's, you know, it's literally blown up the business. It, you know, we've, we've literally a 200 X, right? Um, TikTok has been great for us and, and maybe I'll dig a little bit deeper and, and I'll try to get some numbers out of them. Oh, amazing. Like, you know, uh, have you guys crossed the six figure mark? Something like that, right? Without being too pushy or needy, just genuine conversation. Um, and he might give me a little bit of a figure. Yeah, we've crossed the six figure mark. Cool. So now I know where they're currently at. What are they trying to get to? Amazing, John. Are, 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 are you guys planning on, on scaling the organic at all? Or, you know, what are you trying to take the business in the, in the next, uh, in the next three months now that you, you really have some momentum behind you. So I'm trying to get, you know, I'm, I'm trying to see what they're trying to get the business to. Okay. So he might say something like, Yes, Jaime, you know, we're, we're really trying to take the business to seven figures in the next six months. I think, you know, organic is, is great and we're going to continue to do so. But, um, you know, paid ads has been, has been working uh, pretty well for us. It's just we're trying to get the hang of, of I don't know, the, the TikTok ads platform or something like that, right? Uh, again, the, you know, I'm not saying it's going to be as smooth as this, but I'm, I'm saying if you follow this framework, you can have way better, you know, way higher success rate. And hopefully you can see why. Way higher success rate than most agency owners do, which is just some fucking canned, boring ass uh, messages. That I, have, that I have absolutely no no uh, personalization and that are not using this appointment standing framework, okay? When you have the authority on your profile page that I've shown you how to how to uh, do, when you have the sort of content uh, distribution strategy that I've shown you, I've given you a little snippet of, and then when you have an appointment setting structure that has some of the components that I'm showing you and that you can eventually delegate to an appointment setter, you can see why you can you can start booking at least one to two meetings, right? Like we're booking in twenty to thirty plus meetings every single day. Like you can get a fraction of that, right? You can get a, a little fraction of that uh, if you if you uh, use a very similar framework, right? So you're trying to get you're trying to see what what they're trying to get to. Maybe John tells you, right? And now what you do is you are gonna go ahead and propose a little 
just a little no obligation value, pure value a call, right? So I'm gonna say, um, John, that is absolutely amazing. Um, you know, I, th I think you guys have an incredible future ahead. Would love to see if me and the team can help bring a little bit more clarity uh, on how to actually crush it. Uh, we've been we've been uh, working with some very top um, fra fashion brands on this, and and would love to share with you uh, some of the the strategies that have worked uh, well for us. Are you free for a call this week? Right. So I'm already assuming that he's going to be interested in that, right? And then I'm I'm pitching the you know I'm just generally asking like, are you free for a call this week? Okay. Do you see how it's just a value proposal, right? I'm not talking about the service. I'm not talking about anything else. I'm just talking about like, I'm, I'm personalizing it to what the outcome that they actually want. I'm also personalizing it, personalizing it to where they're currently at, right? So using the information snippets that that this person has given me and then proposing a call. Are you free for a call this week? Uh, Jaime, sure. You know, I'm free Tuesday, Wednesday, blah, blah. He'll say some random dates and I'll go, uh, cool. Do you want me to send you over my calendar? Uh, might be easier that way, right? And then I just send over Acuity, Canonly, which I showed you, told you that you should uh, get in place, and that, that would be that. Okay, so I think you know I got a call in in two minutes, uh, but you know hopefully you guys are enjoying this. If you are, drop a massive thumbs up, a common roadmap if you want to enter that that giveaway. And the final thing I'll leave you with is big big nose. Okay, do not do this. Do not talk about working together ever, ever before you've actually jumped on a first call with them, right? Do not talk about marriage before you've gone to a false date. It's as simple as that. Do not even talk about the idea of working together. Just don't talk about it. Just keep it to finding out where they're currently at, what you know, what they're trying to get to, and then just once you have those those snippets of information, proposing the call. And then also do not talk about your service and what you do. Focus on their problems and aspirations. I see this all the time with agency owners. Like they literally open up with the service that they offer and what they do. They don't care. They don't care. They could not care less, right? They, they, don't, have, they, they don't have time to even speak to their friends. You think they care about what you do? People are inherently selfish. They've got their own problems. Focus on their problems and aspirations and you'll have their time and attention. It's as simple as that, right? So be smart about this. Make sure that you do things right. And you have a lot of success. And this is just one tiny snippet um, of some cell systems that that lead to the the results that I've, I've shown you with uh, with Liam, right? Where you go from zero to like literally twenty six k. I mean, I haven't included another another screenshot that he sent me over IG, but um, and like Liam, you know, we've got hundreds and hundreds. Uh, is the reason why we have the high success rate in the agency coaching space because it's up to date and it's personalized and uh, we're doing things well. It's as simple as that, right? So with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, drop a massive thumbs up. And uh, with that being said, I will see you on the next live training.